welcome back to Adventures in Costuming and Cosplay. Today is Wonder Woman The Corset. I'm going to be using the Simplicity pattern because it's actually a pretty good pattern for corset making. There are some things that I have to do to modify it to make it fit better and also be the Wonder Woman corset that I want. For example, I'm not going to close it up the front. It will only lace up the back. I'm going to raise up the top a little bit because this one's actually pretty, pretty low when you get it finished and I want to make sure that I don't have any accidents because that sucks. The other thing to consider when you're using these patterns is that they tend to add ease into these corsets, meaning that they're too big if you actually go with the body measurements that it suggests that you go with. If I went with this uh, pattern's body measurements, it would have me at a size 18. Now, when I use patterns, sometimes I am an 18. I would normally go with a size 10 in regular clothes. And I have found out through trial and error that this pattern works best when I go with the size 10 and not the size 18. In this case, I'm going to be going with a size 12 because I know that I'm using this leather, which is pretty thick. And I'm going to use a layer of leather and a layer of canvas. So I know that the thickness will actually make the whole thing a little bit smaller around. And worse comes to worse, I can always make it smaller if I have to. But I am going to have to make it taller. And I may actually make it a little bit longer as well. Creating the pattern, I first trace my original pattern pieces, make sure that when I write it down on my paper, I have plenty of room between my pattern pieces so that I can make my modifications. Then I add it to the top and to the bottom. I cut out my pattern piece. I cut out my leather. As I cut out the leather, since I'm doing it out of scrap leather, I can only do one piece at a time. The important thing here is to make sure you flip your pattern piece over so that you are cutting out a right and a left side of your corset and you don't end up with an entirely right-sided corset. When I cut out my lining, I use the leather pieces as my pattern so that I can make sure that even if I didn't cut out the pattern exactly the same, my lining matches the actual leather that I'm using for the corset. My next step is I'm going to take each one of my pieces and I'm going to sew the canvas to its lining. This is a process called flat lining and I end up with my leather attached to my lining. That will help it not stretch up. Uh, notice that I am doing it well into the edge of the fabric so that when I do my real seams that this will never show. Now I just do it to all the pieces. I finished sewing all of my pieces together and my next step I'm going to sew piping on because I want each seam to have this gold piping that's reminiscent of her golden lasso. I lay all my pieces out in order so that I don't get anything mixed up. Now I take my piping and I'm going to lay it on and sew it down. My goal is to stitch as close to the edge of my gold as I can and right about where the seam allowance should be when I'm finished. As I sew down my piping, I make sure that I sew it only to one side of my seam so that I don't have too much piping going on. And it adds a really pretty effect to the finished product. I'm careful when I sew my piping down to make sure that the seam that I'm sewing is exactly where I want my finished seam to be. Got all my piping on, so the next step is I start sewing my pieces. Now, the trick to success with this is you flip it over so that the seam that has the piping on it is on top. That way I can follow the seam of the piping and get everything in exactly the right spot and not have weirdness with my piping, theoretically. There we have it. Now you notice, I'm not using any pins. The more you have to pin something, the easier it is to make mistakes. Luckily this isn't velvet, because velvet you have to pin. Leather is pretty good at staying where I want it to stay. Also, it's very hard to pin leather anyway, because it's so thick, you'll bend your pins. So, 
when you're pinning leather, it'll leave holes behind. So if you can avoid it, don't use pins. It also slows the whole process down a lot. I can already tell just by holding it up that the top is pretty enormous. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, finish up the center back, put the grommets in it so that then I can put it on for real and test it and figure out how much do I need to take out and from where. I put the ribbon on the edge, then I fold over my edge and stitch it down. And this becomes a casing for my center back boning. And I do it on both sides. As you can tell, a regular machine will sew leather, but if you're gonna sew leather a lot, I recommend that you go ahead and invest in a heavier duty machine, simply because these machines can't handle them forever. I know that because I killed one of my sewing machines. So now I'll be able to put my boning in here and then put grommets in. So how tight do you want this? Tighter than that. I'm mostly close. Mostly close. Yeah. Yeah, because that makes the front not as crazy. It's still a little bit bad. That's bad. Yeah, what you <laughs> I need a bed post to hold on to. Okay. So that's the whole thing. Oh my god. Look at this top! <laughs> it's huge! Well, you can do what my drill sergeant told me. Grow a pair! I'd have to grow a lot of pairs. All right, so... You need pins? Yeah. The bottom isn't too bad. It does need to come in here and maybe a little bit in here. But, yeah, the top is huge. <laughs> in, in normal. And you... And I'm gonna need you to also pin the back too. I don't know if we can pin it or if we can if we have to draw on it because it's leather and it doesn't pin real well. Maybe you can try throwing a pin in. It's about perfect. So throw a pin. I'm gonna throw a pin in your butt so it's possible. And if we can just figure out one side, then I'll make the other side match. But yeah, this is going, coming in almost an inch because it's crazy. I'm sorry, I'm coughing. I don't cough for my own amusement. So which All right, one? then I think, I don't, I don't know, know. You this tell seems me. pretty snug to me. Well, and it'll snug up more once I get the boning in, because there's no boning mm -hmm. in here now. Once oh, okay. I get the boning in, that also will... Snug it? It will snug it down some, because it'll add an extra layer of stuff, which will do that. Okay. Um, but the bottom pins, uh, the other thing to do, is get a sharpie and then we draw because it's pen. showing up yeah if i do lose the pen it also shows me where it needs to match back up with the original scene because the waist is sadly fine this would be so much easier if i didn't have piping in the seam but that will fit me much much better but i think it'll or you it'll just work. like leave it that way and turn these into like giant razor blades or something that would not be wonder woman Perhaps we'll save that for a different costume. <laughs> I get so much help. <laughs> so you're ready? ready to I think out? I'm ready to come All out, right. yeah. Around. I'm taking a lot in, so I have to go back in, I have to open up the seam, I have to take the piping off, then I have to figure out where the new seam is going to go, I'll trim it, so that then I can put the piping back in the right spot and then sew it back up. Hello, and we're back. I have seam ripped out the things that need adjusting and I'm going to pin them in place. I have my lines drawn on this side. So I'm doing it partially by sight, flipping it back and forth and partially sort of by braille. And I'm actually going to pin it this time so that I can make sure that I get everything in place. As I've previously said, it's better to avoid pinning if you possibly can, but sometimes you just got to suck it up and do it. Maybe I've got it a little bit too far over. Although I think in this case a little bit snug is going to be better than a little bit loose. I'm also going to fold it in half and make sure that I'm actually symmetrical. And it's pretty close, but this one's going in more. 
There we go. So I'm going to fuss with this until I get it where I feel it's symmetrical and about right. Because now is the time to do this. Looks pretty close. Love the pressure foot on this thing. It's wonderful. This is upholstery leather. It's a little bit heavier duty than garment weight leather. So it's a little bit tougher to work with because it's really meant for couches. My next step is I sew my grosgrain ribbon onto my seams. I just sew it to the inside of my seam allowance of the ribbon. The ribbon neatly covers all the raw edges and adds extra strength and support to your seams. Then I take it and I fold it over. The second seam is the one that gets seen on the outside. The cool thing about doing a corset this way rather than totally lining it is that if I want to make changes later, then it's so much easier to go in and change one seam than it is to open up an entire corset and make changes. This is a trick that's often used in the theater. All right, well, it's done. It looks like drunken wolves sewed it, but most of the course is actually gonna be covered by my jacket. Luckily, even though it's top stitching, my thread color matches well enough, and I'm just not gonna worry about it. The inside suddenly looks a lot better without all the little frayy bits everywhere. Okay, so my next step is to put the casings on for my boning, and those are pretty simple to do. Take my same ribbon, pin it down. Now I'm going through the, the canvas and not the leather on this when I'm pinning. So I'm putting a little extra boning in here just to make sure that it's got the proper stiffness. The pattern has directions as to where you can put your boning. I've had so much experience with this that I just kind of know. The kind of ribbon that I'm using for all of this is called Grosgrain Ribbon. I know it's spelled gross grain, but it's pronounced Grosgrain. Now normally I would put some boning in my center, but I am going to be riveting the hard plastic eagle and belt to the front. So what I may do is just put a smaller amount than normal, and I'll double check that I got this in a good spot before I actually cut my boning. Now I just sew on either side of my ribbon. Oh, nice straight lines now. Oh, that's pretty. Now I'm going to make sure that my zip tie fits. So I'm going to cut off the really flimsy bottom part, but for the test. Oh, yeah. There it goes. Perfect. Now I just have to do this ten more times. Now when I go around the bottom edge, I always tend to back backstitch and re just to reinforce the bottom because there's nothing more annoying than wearing a corset where that boning is poking out the bottom. One of the things to note is when I'm doing my boning is that the boning does not go in the seam covers. It just goes into the boning casing. I've got all my boning casing in. So I'm going to trim all my little tails. Then I'm going to cut my boning and assemble it. And then put seam binding around it. So doing the boning is super easy. Uh, I buy these industrial zip ties, which works great. And what I do is I snip off, if you look at the end, there's a piece that looks a little bit more flimsy than the rest of it. And I just snip these off. These are a pair of uh, giant snippers. Figure out about where I want it to be. It wants to be about three quarters of an inch shorter than the space. And the reason behind that is, is when you put your seam binding on, you have to be able to sew it. So I snip it and I, sn I round off the edges with my snipper. And then I take a big old file and I just file off my edges, smooth it out so there's no pokey bits that are gonna poke through. Because believe me, if you leave any pokey bits, it will poke straight on through this fabric and straight into your skin and you will be sad and blue. If you don't have the big file, you can use sandpaper, you can use a sander, you can even use an emery board if you get truly desperate because it's two o'clock in the morning, every single thing on the planet is closed and it is, you know, four hours before the convention the next day, which of course never, ever, ever happens to me. Can you believe that? I have a bridge. 
that I can sell you. I can also get my nails done at the same time. People probably wonder why I have such crappy nails. This is why. Then you just slide it in and voila, boning is in your corset. And I'm gonna keep going. Once you get all your boning in, the last thing you do is trim up the top and the bottom to exactly where you want it. And then you put seam binding on it. And then done. And then any leftovers, I just stick them back in here and save them for shorter corsets or waist cinchers. And it's so much cheaper. And it works just as well. And it's not as heavy as spring steel boning. Because you can buy that heavy duty stuff. It's great, especially if you're a larger person. It can be really nice, but I've even had good luck doing a size 22 person corset using this kind of stuff. And she looked great and it lasted a long time. It lasted for years. Any kind of boning, if your person bends over too much, will warp over time. And that's metal, plastic, anything. The one kind of boning that you don't want to buy is the boning that they have at the fabric store because that's for swimsuits. All right. Putting in the last section of boning. Here we have the finished product. Notice that I've put the seam binding on the top and bottom. If you're interested in more information about how to do seam binding, check out my seam binding quick toot. Tune in next week to see the eagle and belt pieces created to finish the look.